Peace, y'all. I am ICC, and welcome to 10 Oddly Familiar Video Game Characters. In this episode, we will focus on video game characters that are either ripped off, influenced, or just straight out tributes. All this means is, if you saw a character and you thought they looked familiar, then you might find them on this list. We are here just to look at similarities. They don't have to be exact, and they don't have to be on purpose. So let's jump right into the character special. Right off the bat, we have a double whammy. I'm getting this out of the way now because I have a feeling this may be one of the more popular ones because the man that inspired them is a legend. Number 10, we have Fei Long from the Street Fighter series. He first appeared in 1993 when Street Fighter II went super. Fei Long was designed after martial artist and movie star Bruce Lee. The character's design and moves make reference to Lee. I would have put him higher on the list but it's not very original to model your fighter off the most bad fighter of all time. And this brings me to the second part of this double whammy. Number nine is Martial Law from the Tekken series. I am picking Martial Law over Forest Law because Martial appears earlier in the series and Forest is just the son of Martial anyways. Both of the characters are pretty much paying homage to Bruce Lee the appearance, the fighting styles, and even some of the voices in-game. This, without a doubt, is a tribute to the legend that is Bruce Lee. Number 8 is Ryo Hazuki from Shenmue on the Sega Dreamcast from 1999. In 1996, AM2 began developing a Sega Saturn RPG starring Akira and based on the Virtua Fighter series. If you look at early screen captures from Shenmue, you will see Akira with his red wristbands and spiky anime hair. In 1997, development of the game moved to Sega's upcoming console, the Sega Dreamcast, and the Virtua Fighter connection was dropped. The character was renamed from Akira to Ryo, and the Shenmue game that we all know and love came to be. So next time you are playing Shenmue, if you happen to think of Akira, now you know why. Lucky number seven is Susumu Hori from the Mr. Driller series. Mr. Driller is an extremely fun game and underrated in my opinion. The objective of the game is to dig as deep as possible without being crushed or running out of air and reaching the goal. The levels are randomly generated, and the blocks can merge with other similar colors. They will disappear after four or more blocks merge together. This game was originally intended to be Dig Dug 3, so if you take the character Susumu and compare him to the star of Dig Dug, Taizo Hori, you can see they are similar. With a little more research, you will find the star of Mr. Driller, Susumu Hori, is the son of the legendary Driller, star of Dig Dug, Taizo Hori. Lucky. Number six is Johnny Cage from the 1992 fighting game Mortal Kombat by Midway. Created by John Tobias and originally named Michael Grimm, the character of Johnny Cage is a martial artist and movie star who originally joined the Mortal Kombat tournament to prove that he doesn't use special effects and that he is a real martial artist. Johnny Cage was created with Jean-Claude Van Damme in mind and they wanted Van Damme himself to play the role in the video game. However, this fell through, but the character that remained was renamed to Johnny Cage and he was then turned into a parody of Van Damme and modeled after Frank Dukes which is Van Damme's role in the movie Bloodsport. They share the same outfit from certain scenes, and the game also includes one of Van Damme's moves from the movie, his splits punch to the nuts. Johnny Cage wins. Our number five slot is held by two people, but I will not be counting this as a double whammy because they are partners when it comes to fighting crime. The game Police Knots is a visual novel adventure game by Hideo Kojima. First released in 1994, with remakes coming later in 1995 and 1996 on the 3DO, the PS1, 
and the Sega Saturn respectively. The game pays homage to various works of art that were released previously, and one of them being Jonathan and Ed. Now the first thing you have, these two characters, a black guy and a white guy who fight crime. One of the men has a receding hairline, a thick stash, and if that wasn't enough, in some of the scenes he is wearing a brown suit with a red necktie and a white undershirt. Now let's take a look at Lethal Weapon and compare that with Danny Glover. His physical appearance is the same, all the way down to the clothes. Now let's take a look at the white guy. He has his 80s white guy mullet, dark hair while smoking and wearing a letterman jacket. If you look at Mel Gibson, he has the same mullet, always smoking a cigarette in the movie, and his letterman jacket. I feel safe to say Jonathan and Ed from Police Knots are inspired by Riggs and Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon. Unlucky number four is Tajima from the game Tenchu Wrath of Heaven. There is absolutely no doubt that this is a tribute to Tatsuya Nakadai's character in the 1964 movie Yojimbo. This is one that I saw almost instantly. I am a huge fan of samurai movies. As I am part Japanese, I have been watching these movies since I was a young kid with my family. Now, when taking a closer look at Tajima, first things first is the striped kimono. Most people back then had a solid color kimono because it cost extra money to get ones like this. This is a kimono of someone who is not dirt poor. Also the scarf, the gun, the hairstyle, and even down to the way they wear their kimonos, I feel safe to say this is paying homage. And I think one of my favorite video game series paying homage to one of my favorite movie directors is pretty cool. I would put this at number one, but Tajima is the only one on this list that ends up deceased by the game's end. So I think he is clearly deserving of unlucky number four. If you ever wonder why I call this unlucky number four, the number four in Japanese is pronounced shi, which is the exact same way you pronounce death. If you ever go to Japan, you will notice elevators go from the third to the fifth floor. Nobody wants to live or work on the death floor. So with that in mind, number four is fitting for Tajima. To begin our top three spots, we have Hugo in at number three. Hugo is a Capcom creation who appears in multiple games. He first appeared in Final Fight using the name Andore. And he first appeared in the Street Fighter series in Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. Hugo and Andore are actually the same person, with his full name being Hugo Andore. Now the name Andore would actually be the Japanese spelling of the name Andre, which brings me to Andre the Giant. Andre was a professional wrestler and actor, and while I don't recall him ever wearing a pink jumpsuit like Hugo, in Street Fighter 4, Hugo can wear a black jumpsuit just like Andre. I remember playing Final Fight back in the day, and everyone thought of that as Andre. With WrestleMania 4 headlining Hulk vs. Andre in 1988, and Final Fight being released the following year in 1989, the game just might have been in the planning stages while WrestleMania 4 was being aired. Andre stood an impressive 7 foot 4 inches or 224 centimeters, making him bigger than pretty much everyone he ever met. A lot like Hugo. Are you ready? In at number two, we have Lei Wu Long from the Tekken series. Lei Wu Long was introduced when Tekken 2 was first released in arcades in 1995. I remember playing it in the arcade, and the first character I selected was Lei Wu Long. The reason I picked him was clear. He resembled Jackie Chan. The movie Super Cop starring Jackie Chan just came out a few years earlier in 1992. So with that in mind, and the fact Namco decided to give Lei the nickname of Super Cop, as well as give him an alternate costume that resembles what Jackie was wearing in Drunken Master 2, 
How can you not want to see Lei Wu Long in action? Lei also has the ability to switch his Kung Fu styles, and one of the styles is Drunken Fist Boxing, a style in which Jackie is known for. Now you take all of that and also throw in Lei's hairstyle compared to young Jackie, they look similar. Lei Wu Long's name is in Mandarin, despite him being from Hong Kong, where they speak Cantonese. And Jackie, if you didn't guess, was born in Hong Kong as well. Now this last fact may just be a coincidence, but I think it's worth sharing. Lei Wu Long's voice actor since the release of Tekken 4 is Hiroya Ishimaru, the official Japanese dubbed voice for Jackie Chan. Our top spot is Balrog from Street Fighter 2. Now the first thing I must mention is the fact his name is M. Bison in Japanese versions, with the N standing for Maiku. Now taking a second look at who we know now as Mike Bison, how can you not see and hear that's Mike Tyson? Well Capcom knew this was too similar and this is the reason why in the states the names of Vega, Balrog and M. Bison have been swapped. In Street Fighter Alpha 3, Balrog even tells some of his defeated opponents that he's going to bite their ear off. And the reason why I'm putting this in the top spot, are you going to tell Mike Tyson he's number two at anything? But all joking aside, when Tyson was in his prime, he was the most feared man on the planet. Known for his first round knockouts of opponents, he is one of my favorite boxers. If you are a fan of organized fighting in any form, check out some prime Mike Tyson. He made professional boxers look like they have never even put on boxing gloves. So that's all we have for this episode. These are just 10 of the oddly familiar characters that I have found. I already have a second episode planned, but if you guys or gals know any oddly familiar characters, feel free to comment. I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.